we call for this press briefing because after the huge success that we had in Kaduna Peace Summit, Kavancha, and uh, we submitted the report, and there were a lot of good testimonies of what God did uh, using that one single meeting to solve a lot of problems in Kaduna State. We now dwell down to Plateau State where there were some attacks here and there. And uh, God also helping us to be able to uh, settle certain issues. In fact, within the weekend, we had a meeting in Joss. We were told of many attacks that were already on place to take place. But because of that one single meeting in Joss, the whole place was calm. And we headed to Taraba, meeting the governor, so that we also start planning the Jukun and Thief uh, meeting which the governor finally accepted and we were to go to Benue to meet with the governor of Benue. Uh, fortunately, even when we were making all this move, this ugly thing came up and uh, brought us a setback that we have to go back to the drawing board. That's why I call you this morning so that we can lend our voice uh, with other distinguished Nigerians to uh, plead with our youth. So let me start by saying I wish to thank the Nigerian youth, resilience, doggedness, and firm belief in Nigeria as a nation. You are indeed the reason why we are existing as a nation because the youth remain the leaders of today and tomorrow. When the protests and the demonstration for NSAC's pandemic started, most of us were taken at back, but we watched with keen interest the peaceful manner in which the youths conducted the protests and coordinated manner in which their demands were made and presented to the government. We are not against lawful protests, which is allowed in any modern democratic setting such as ours. We were worried that such peaceful and organized protests may be hijacked by those who do not mean well for this nation. Very much to my cheering, this was exactly what transpired when the Hitato peaceful protest was overrun by hooklums and hooligans who went bansat to loot and destroy properties of our commonwealth and that of individuals to paint a bad picture of the organized Nigerian youths. As an apostle of peace, which I have spent a large chunk of my life pursuing and building bridges, I make bold to say that without peace, there will be no meaningful development. The wanton destruction of national assets, monuments by those who circumvented the peace process by the organizers, Nigerian youth, leave much to be desired. The money which will have been used for infrastructural development will now be used to fix those things which were destroyed by errant youths. I also, also sudden is the manner at which some disgruntled elements loot, looted warehouse of both government and individuals. At this juncture, I am pleading with the organized Nigerian youths to continue to <coughs> exercise their trust and accept the promise of Mr. President in addressing their five points demand. I want to also assure the youth that their voice have been heard and that the federal government will do the needful. I therefore wish to call on the organized Nigerian youth and the hijackers to embrace peace and dialogue are the only panacea for enduring resolution to their demands. 
The time to cease fire is now. And let me repeat by saying again to Nigerian youths, the time to cease fire is now. All hands must be on deck to find a lasting solution to this problem staring us at the face as a people. The present circumstances have made it compelling for us to work collectively towards building a better country. The youths have what it takes to be part of this journey to greater Nigeria. Therefore, the need for the youths to channel their energy on productive ventures at a time like this cannot be over stress. More so as religious leaders, we owe it a duty to lead our followers on the path of peace and progress. The pulpit should be used to propagate messages that edify and build humanity. Finally, I, use, I wish to express my heartfelt commiseration on the death of innocent Nigerian youths and even adults too who died in the struggle for better tomorrow. Thank you and God bless. That the president can still call on those governors and ask why. And also, uh, that to me is not a reason for the youth to do that. Because we must be careful to look at the implication of this in the future. Um, uh, uh, in, 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 in the Bible days, in the Quran days, if you read both Bible and Quran, you will see that warehouses were places that saved the nations. And food should be there. Of course, we're not saying that you should keep that food without sharing it. When you share, there should be some <coughs> remnant a little bit so that you can wait for the future that is coming. For me, as I was talking to some people, this pandemic took place this year. And you see, it affected a whole lot of farmers. Some farmers do not go to the farm this year because they were asked to be indoor. The greatest way to prevent this was to stay at home. Now, if this year you stay at home without going to farm, and the same this year, the price of uh, petrol rises up, the price of everything rises up. The same this year we were asked that uh, 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 whatever budget we have has to be streamed down. The same this year, the dollar is very high. Now, when do you think the impact of this will come? Is it this year? Of course, no. You should begin to look at next year. So a good governor must plan not only for this year, also for next year. But that is not a reason for them to pack those things as much as it is in the warehouses. It should be something that, even if you are going to leave some, it should not be too much. Also, should expect more to come from the federal government. But the youth should know the power of storage. The power of storage, if you do not store for the, for the, for the future, uh, 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 whatever, then you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are bent for doom for anything to happen. If God will not help <coughs> us next year, there will be no food much next year. Because farmers didn't go out. Especially somebody like me from the middle belt of uh, the, this country, and uh, from the far north, you should know that they will live mostly by farm, by crops, by whatever harvest. Now. Anything we, we plant now and we harvest now, we eat it. So a lot of Nigerians are like that, not like those who do business, and get money and the rest. So they must plan for those people. So as much as the governors should be summoned by Mr. President, to know what really happened at the same time, our youth should take precaution that look, you may not know the reason behind those things that are in the warehouses. Warehouses are meant to keep the future of the country. Well, uh, you see, there is no doubt we have bad leaders. We have bad leaders. It's, it's, it's very, very irritating to say somebody said he left the palliative for him to distribute as his own bad day. Was it a bad day palliative? Well, I have not had that. I have not had it, but if that is really true, then these are the kind of people that are not even expected to be our leaders. 
But the best way to fight these people is not just to fight violently. You use your voting power. Go out and make sure that you mobilize people against them so that next time they shouldn't come back to the house or they shouldn't go to another higher position. So that's the best way to fight, to fight them. All I am after today as a leader and a leader of morale is that violence shouldn't be used as a way to solve problems. That should be taken. Because if we develop that, then it means even you as a father, a father in your house, you're not safe with your children. They can come out and gang up one day and beat you. Let's beat this old man. And where will you go? So if we do not at this moment stand up and tell the youth, this is wrong. This is how Boko Haram started. And today, where are we? With Boko Haram, could we control it? Somebody is there laughing and say, okay, it has happened, it has happened. Let continue to laugh. The day it touches you, then you know how bad it is. This, to me, is a strange spirit that is coming to this country. It's a spirit that we must tell the youth, this is not the way a decent African youth should behave. We must cut this thing off. As much as I identify with them, but in this aspect of violence, I cannot. And when you are doing your peaceful protest, you should be well organized. You should know the implication. If not, you should stop the, the protest and do something better like a press conference, talk to people instead of a protest on the road. Because today, we already have a lot of whole junk of, uh, of criminals in Nigeria. In fact, criminals are overwhelming the good people in this country. And they are waiting for opportunity like this to exploit. And look at them exploit. Up to now, we cannot control the criminals. So are the youth saying they are still the one doing all this stealing? Did they organize to steal? Did they organize to go to individual houses and bond it? I don't think that was their original uh, plan. So this thing, that's why I said I am addressing both the youth and the hijackers. The hijackers are the ones who have spoiled this thing. And two, the youth should know that this country, the leadership of this country is in their hands. They must show the elders the good example. And I will finally say on that note that because somebody do not lead well, you should also follow and make mm -hmm. terrible mistakes. That shows that you are not a good, we are not going to be a good future leader. So we should talk to the youth and let them know that, look, what we are after is that no matter how bad our leaders are, we should learn not to follow their own way. We should be able to have our own way and revive a better Nigeria and a new Nigeria 